Now you may have watched my ultimate character creation video, or my rendering in Blender tutorial, or you may have not. Either way, you should not worry, because in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up an environment using assets from Quixel Megascans. Unfortunately, Quixel Megascans used to be free, but since Epic launched Fab, they've since become paid assets. But that doesn't mean they're not completely unavailable, as Quixel does still offer some bundles for free. I was lucky enough to claim everything on Quixel for free before the end of 2024, so for this video, I'll be using the Quixel Bridge as it's still operational. If you find this tutorial helpful and wish to hire me or learn from me directly, please fill out my form below. Now, let's get to work. I start by opening up my T-Pose character from my Ultimate Character Creation video. I then save the DAS file as a new copy. Now for this new project, I wanted to try something a little different. I had this vision of her standing outside in an alleyway, smoking. Story-wise, I wanted her to look really tired and worn out, as if she had received some bad news, like maybe her date had cancelled or something. Now to make this character's pose stand out, I wanted to do something unique with her clothing. Which brings me to this denim jacket she's wearing, which comes with multiple morph sliders, warping it into different poses. One of these morphs allows for the jacket to be worn off her shoulders, so I used that. I then went into my pose library and looked for a good leaning pose, eventually settling on this smoking pose. Next, I ran two separate cloth simulations, one for the inner layer of clothing and another for the outer layer. This would allow me to see how well the clothing would react to this style of pose, which it simulated without issue. So I started posing the character so she was mimicking my reference images. After some thought, I felt this pose looked more seductive than tired, but I wasn't quite sure, so I decided to duplicate the character and make a second pose, and then compare the two. In the end, I picked the new pose, as it fit my vision much better, as having her arm hanging to her side gave off a very tired and worn out mood. With the new pose, I followed the same procedure as in my last two videos by importing them in and setting up the performance settings, especially including Simplify, which will be very important in this scene. Once that was done, I cleared up the mesh by first removing any poke through on the sweater, then optimizing it by removing any hidden mesh. After that, I now needed to adjust the clothing, as the character's right hand needed to be visible, so you could see her cigarette. First, I cut the jacket sleeve off and made it a separate object, and then used a mix of the proportional editor and the cloth brush to pull the sleeve up. As it's now a separate object, the proportional editor will not affect the rest of the jacket. I then went into my asset library and added in a half-smoked cigarette prop, which I then placed between her two fingers. Next, I needed some reference for an alleyway, so I went into Google Images and went looking. The vibe I wanted was rundown and squalid, but complemented by artistic graffiti all over the walls. So I filled up a pure ref folder with photos which emulated that. Next, I opened up Quixel Bridge and started searching for assets to use in my scene. I started off by searching concrete and then went through all the 3D assets they had on offer. These walls caught my attention, so I checked out the asset collection which they were a part of, being Neo Baroque. In there, I downloaded the modular building base kit. Now let me explain how I'm going to tackle this render. I'm not going to create the entire environment, as that would take too much time. Instead, what I'm going to do is create a partial diorama, where I set up the camera in a fixed position, then build the environment around what that camera sees. This can have its positives and negatives, as you have to have the camera angle you really want before you do anything, otherwise you will have to rebuild the scene again for a new camera angle. But if you get it right, you will be able to work very efficiently, as you'll be working on what is in the frame and not outside the frame. I start by stretching out these two planes so they would act as a base for when I position these Megascan assets. Once the assets had loaded in, I spaced them out and then thought about where to put them. I eventually set it up so she was leaning between this warehouse door and a bricked up window, which made for good framing. Next, I grabbed a modular concrete street asset and placed it below her feet. I then made its texture more grey using a hue saturation node. I also downloaded these concrete curbs, as I noticed in my reference that several buildings were on a slightly raised platform above the street. Next, I needed some set decoration, as I wanted this scene to look really run down and grimy. So I opened up my trash kit bashing pack and took a look at what I could add. I started by copying in some dumpsters and placing them next to her. 
I also extended the curb so it was in front of the warehouse door. To avoid any clipping, I face selected then separated the door. I then dragged it up slightly, leaving a little bit of space between the curb and the door for added realism, as doors tend to not sit on the ground. Next up, I added in some pipes, which did a good job at framing the character some more. I also went into my compositor and added in the Kurohara painterly filter node, which I then temporarily turned on with camera-based compositing. This would allow me to remove the noise from my scene and let me see its basic elements. I took some time to think about what else I could add to enhance the scene. Then I realized the ground she was standing on was too flat. If you look at most city streets, you will find that the ground is quite uneven, mainly due to the landscape it was built on and water erosion over time. So I started by adding a crack to the pavement and using the proportional editor to make it more uneven. I then swapped out the concrete curves with some more weathered ones and placed them more unevenly. Next, I went back into my trash kit and picked out some little bits of rubbish. I then scattered them around her feet. While I was doing this, I decided I did not like the ground asset as it needed to be more worn down. So I went back into Quixel and looked for a replacement. Funnily enough, while doing this, I again found an even better curb, so for the third time, I replaced it. As I was going through these assets, I saw this concrete barrier asset, which gave me an idea. So what I did was download it into my scene, then rotate it 90 degrees, before positioning it under my character's feet. Once in position, I added a curve node to its texture and made it a little bit darker. I then used another barrier to fill in the gaps in the floor. Now my scene was starting to feel pretty run down. Looking at it, I felt like the floor could do with some more detail, so I decided to add in some puddles of water. I did this simply by making a very reflective plane and then placing it inside the floor so it would only appear in the gaps. I then spent some more time moving stuff around in the scene and removing distracting elements. I also added in a finished cigarette at her feet to indicate that she'd been there for a while. Now I've reached the most important part of this video, which is adding graffiti to the walls. I started by searching Google Images and picking out a graffiti tag I liked. I then brought it into Photoshop and removed its background. Now here's the kicker. How am I going to add this graffiti texture to this wall? You may think I'm going to use the stencil tool, but I'm actually not. Instead, I'm going to use a technique I learned from Robin Squares, the correct way to make decals in Blender, so all credit to him. What I basically do first is add in a box empty, then in the wall's material node tree, I add in the graffiti texture. I then use the node wrangler tool to quickly create a mapping and texture coordinate node. Next, I add in a mix node and connect the graffiti and the wall's color texture together. Lastly, I go to the texture coordinate node and set the object to be my box empty. The graffiti texture will then appear on the wall, but it's a bit warped. To fix this, I rotate the box until the graffiti becomes clear and visible. I then set the image texture to clip and then plug the value node into the scale. Now I can reposition the texture so it's in the center of the box. I also add a color ramp to the alpha texture so I can remove any white spots around the border and also fade the graffiti slightly. Lastly, I add a color ramp node to the graffiti's base color, so I can change it on the fly to match my render's color palette. Now, I can use the box empty to reposition the graffiti to wherever I want it to be. I then go pretty ham with adding more graffiti, as this is where I get to be my most creative. I also kept switching on camera-based compositing to see how well everything contrasted together. The only annoying part is that I had to keep adding mix nodes into my material, which were causing a lot of clutter. Eventually, I came up with this neat little bit of street art by editing this Aztec illustration into a dragon breathing someone's tag as fire. This gave my character a very striking backdrop, which was exactly what I was looking for. I then finished up by adding graffiti to the dumpster and pipes and changing the color ramp values around. Now I need to light the scene. I start by rotating the sun around to see how the shadows would look. I also tried different HDRIs to see how they affected the mood of the scene. As I increased the light strength, I noticed my character was starting to look a little washed out. So I added a hue saturation node to the sweater and jacket and bumped up the saturation strength so they would be brighter. I also decided to remove the graffiti tag on the left side because I felt it was making the scene a little cluttered. I then desaturated some of the background tags so they were a little more faded. 
Next, I wanted a little bit of atmospheric fog in my scene, as if there was some dust in the air. So I brought in a cube and added a volume scatter node to its material. I then expanded that cube so it filled the whole scene. I didn't like how the light was showing up on this dumpster, so I added in some planes with black materials and a little bit of opacity to block the light. I also felt this drain pipe did not match my reference, so I reshaped it. Before finalizing the light, I tried something called a slice of light, where you have a single streak of light which cuts across your scene. It can make for a very striking image, but I decided against it for this scene as I wanted something more realistic. I then went into the color management tools and adjusted the values for my scene so it was a little bit more brighter and vibrant. Now I felt the scene was almost done, I just needed to find the correct camera lens to use. Just like in my last video about the lens sim add-on, I opened up a pure ref folder, then cycled through the different lenses, screenshotting each one with my iTop tool. I then used this file to pick the best camera lens which best suited my scene, which ended up being the Canon Serenar 85mm. Lastly, before rendering, I made some little tweaks to my character. For example, her pants were very bumpy when they should be straight, as when you bend your leg, the fabric should stretch. So I used the sculpt tool to smooth out those bumps. Now I can start rendering. The first thing I do is make sure the resolution is set to 4K as the added pixels will increase the clarity. Next, I use my final check add-on to hide anything hidden in the viewport from my render. I then turn off noise threshold and set the denoiser to open image accuracy with the quality at high. Before I do a full render, I make sure to do a partial render to check that the quality on the character is up to standard. I wasn't happy with this result, so I increased the render samples to 1000, as the haze from my volume scatter cube was causing the scene to become more noisy. Once the render was complete, I went into my compositor and created four copies, each with their own Korahara node strength. I then brought them all into Photoshop and stacked them so the clean version was at the bottom and the different Korahara versions were at the top. I started by adding a mask to the heavy render, then, using a white brush, I reveal sections of that layer on top of my clean version. I did this mostly on the graffiti, as I wanted it to feel more like paint rather than a simple decal on the wall. I used the low render on the dumpster's graffiti, as I didn't want it to be smudged. Next, I use a little bit of medium on her hair to remove its noisiness. While doing this, I noticed some artifacts on the character, like this stretched texture and this light spot, so I used the stamp tool to cover those up. Now I can do some color correction, so I go into my adjustment layers tools and add in a color lookup filter, which I then cycle through. I like to mix different color lookup layers together using their opacity strength, which gives a nice variety of different values. I chose to go with a cooler tone overall to give off a sunny day vibe. I then added in a level and curve adjustment layer to brighten up the scene a little bit. I also wanted to brighten up her face, so I put a white spot of paint on her face, then set the layer to use the overlay blend mode. This allows me to adjust the values on her face without affecting the rest of the render. After that, I finally decided to call it. I did some last minute cleanup and then did a merge copy of everything. I then sharpened the final result and now I'm done. Thanks for watching, and if you've watched all three of these videos, thank you especially. I've got more stuff planned out, so subscribe for more tutorials.